Hey everybody, welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. Um, this is episode 25. We are going to work on some scenery. Uh, I haven't done any scenery through any of the episodes, so it's about time. Um, we're going to start with the last project that we're working on. And that is the ash pit for Durango. And this is an HON3, HO scale narrow gauge project. So I'll put some close-ups up. So washing the uh, ash pit with 70% alcohol and India ink, um, a 1 to 10 mix, 1 part India ink to 10 parts alcohol. Wash it real good and you can see the grime. Now most of this is going to get covered with all of the Woodland Scenics coal and ash and everything else that's in there. Um, and then the ash pit is going to be essentially covered with chalk dust. So most of the stuff's going to get hidden anyway. The ash pit has been completed. It's this structure here, sitting on girders and footers. Um, uh, and then you can see that some of the ash has been uh, piled up inside here. So this is essentially, um, it's Woodland Scenic coal, fine grade coal put in there with um, sand uh, as well. Um, and it also has some chalk dust that's been put in there. Um, I have some artist packs of chalk dust. They come in uh, 12 sticks and there's a pack of earth tones, there's a pack of gray and white tones. You can use either of those. Um, for this project, I used the, um, the gray, black, gray, up to white. It's gradients, like a gray scale um, on this. And you can see that there's actually a couple different shades of um, the chalk dust that I used. So anyway, um, it even sticks to the rails on the sides and I'm using photos of the actual structure as a reference. And you can see I, I have photos up on my computer screens. I refer to photos the whole time I'm working on something. It's nice to just be able to glance over and take a look at the actual structure. And you can see some of these there's not a lot of color. It's got a little bit of weeds and stuff around the edges, but other than that, it's a gray, kind of a, almost like a asphalt colored gray and black cinder tones on pretty much everything around the structure. And it's a lot uh, lighter along the rails and in the pit itself. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. So. Uh, the supplies that we have for this project are obviously um, we're going to use some ballast colors. This is Woodland Scenic Fine Ballast. Um, I've used this in conjunction with Medium Ballast along with the Coarse Ballast. So like weathering in doing scenery, it's a really good idea to uh, approach it in layers. So figure out what you want the lowest color layer to be and we've pre-painted the board uh, black along the tracks kind of a tannish color uh, around the other side so that way if there's any spots where it uh, doesn't get filled in completely you've got that base coat that base color um, it also kind of gives you an idea where you're headed too which is really nice instead of just applying stuff straight onto plywood um, sometimes it it helps to visualize what you're going to do. Also, as you're doing it, um, I've placed along here in this back area of the pit and in this gradient as you, the track goes into the pit, I've put um, basically spackling paste on top of layers of cork roadbed, like tiered layers, and that just builds up a hill. So what it allows me to do is not have to use a whole bunch of ground cover or ballast or whatever to build that up. It's a lot cheaper and goes on easy about an hour or two, depending on how thick you put it on. Um, I use the, uh, 
I use the spackling compound that goes on pink and then dries white. So you can tell when it's dry. So just what I do. Everybody has their own methods. So we're going to use the coarse stuff along the tracks, but then after we get that glued in, we're going to layer in a, a, a finer grade on top of that. And ultimately we're going to end up with some coal. Um, and this is again, just a Woodland Scenic uh, um, grade of bag of coal that I've had for a long time. And um, then there's a brown that I'm going to use around the outside. I've got several more back there and I'm always playing around with, you know, should I put a little bit of reddish in there and maybe pre-mix it as I put it out. So everybody has their own um, habit of what they're going to do. But again, mine's going to look like that when it's done. So I'm going to look at the pictures constantly. And I can tell you just from looking at it, a lot of gray with a lot of black on top of it. So that makes it really pretty monochrome. But, you know, this is a engine facility in a yard. So there's not a lot of grass. There's not a lot of dirt. Uh, it's been covered with ash and, you know, ballast with, you know, whatever's left over, the clinkers and that type of thing. So anyway, some of the other tools that we use are going to be, I don't do anything without my, without my close-up glasses. My daughter got these for me for Christmas. Awesome present. Thank you, sweetie. Um, spoon, don't just take these shakers and shake them out because it's just going to go everywhere. Be really delicate about what you do and really intentional. So it takes a lot longer, but you'll notice it in the, in the end. So once you get the ballast down and even the finer layers as you're putting dirt maybe around the outside or along some of the slopes, um, we're going to use a fixative. I've heard hairspray. I've actually used hairspray in the past, but probably going to just stick with some testers dull coat this time. Um, it's just what I'm in the habit of using. Um, as you get to the point where you're going to start to finish some of the um, some of the scene, uh, you're going to want to move stuff around and just kind of like use different types of paint brushes, get them off the heads of the rails. Um, I use an old toothbrush when I get done to just make sure that everything's cleaned out. Um, once it's glued down, I kind of give it a once clean over and then I'll even scrape the tops of the rails with sandpaper or the uh, blade of, of an X-Acto knife and just do one rail at a time and just scrape the material off. So I have those tools as well. Um, I don't do anything unless I've got toothpicks around. I've modeled so much stuff with just toothpicks. So, and then, um, I've got cotton swabs, uh, Super glue. If it wasn't for super glue, I probably wouldn't be able to model most of the stuff that I'm doing. Um, and then I use this artist. Um, I think it's a paint uh, palette uh, applier. And you, I use it to scoop uh, material out and sprinkle it onto the areas that I, that I want uh, applied. And sometimes I'll just take a little bit and I'll have the container very close and I'll just scoop a little bit out and apply it and allow it to just pour down where I want it. So that this is the tool that I essentially did the ash pit, the material inside the ash pit with. So that's another good tool. Um, and then, so once we get it put down, once we have shoot a, a light, really light coat of, um, dull coat on it and this is basically just to give it a temporary uh, fix then we use uh, water and uh, either white glue or clear glue matte medium uh, essentially Elmer's glue uh, for what I did with the ash pit I used uh, washable clear school glue now, I don't anticipate this ever getting wet, so I don't really have to worry about it being washable. But uh, I like the fact that it actually dries clear as opposed to regular Elmer's glue or matte medium, which if you put it on thick enough, it's going to have that white milky color to it. So 
Um, I can't even see any of the glue. And there was some pretty thick pockets of glue on there when I started. And um, I let it dry last night, and right now it looks really good. Um, I can't see glue residue at all. I thought I was going to have to go back over some of the really deep places for glue. I thought I was going to have to go over and put a little bit more texture on it, um, either some of the sand and coal or some of the um, uh, chalk dust, which is essentially what the ash has to look like when it's done. It needs to be very chalky. I couldn't build up a mound with just um, one material and have it look good. It had to have a couple different shades of chalk, uh, a little bit of black in there just to represent some of the clinkers that come out, um, some of the coal residue that maybe had fallen out or whatever. So um, essentially that's the, that's the tools that we're gonna use. Really good lighting. Um, I use just some cheap lamps that I can aim and even while I move these things around constantly while I'm working so I get just absolute perfect light. I have two of those. Um, I use fluorescent lights in the room as well but uh, as soon as you lean over something you really need something else close up. So that's about it. Um, those are the tools. So the plan going forward is ballast, lighter ballast. Um, we have three different levels of that. Uh, shoot a, a layer of dull coat in between, put some glue down. Um, depending on how much we decide to bite off, we might want to just do uh, the track and then the area around it and then grow out from there. Um, this is not a very big area, so it shouldn't be very difficult. It's, I think, six inches by two feet. So it's very small, um, but I also know this is going to be a focal point, so I want to take a lot of time to make sure that the details look good too. Um, and that's about it. So we'll go ahead and get started and then uh, show you some stills as we go along, see what it looks like. This is the first layer of ballast. This is going to be the, the most granular, lumpy ballast layer. Um, once I get this brushed into place and I see a couple little spots where I want to I want to take all the big rocks and get them off the ties maybe some of the smaller ones that would be appropriate um, but this layer is really going to be like kind of like the base coat so um, I'm gonna shoot this with some testers dull coat and then apply some of the glue and water mix it's gonna have a little bit of of an agent in there like dishwashing soap so that it cuts the viscosity and uh, flows a little bit better but this looks pretty close I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shoot this and then uh, we'll glue it down okay at this stage we're pretty much finished with the ballast layer we've got there is two different size of gray. There's actually three, but it's kind of hard to see. Um, the large size, you can see a little bit at the end of the track here. Uh, there's some smaller size mixed in there. Uh, you also see that the end of the um, ash pit tr lower track is starting to get submerged in some of the ground cover. We're gonna really lose the end of the rails here with some of the normal ground cover. And uh, there's a little bit of the really fine black coal. Uh, there's different densities on here so that you can see that it's basically not well-maintained uh, track area. Um, there's also sections where it's pretty much just black. Uh, we're also going to filter some weeds and some ground cover in that as well. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty much finished with the ballast stage, and we're going to add some of the uh, ground cover and maybe some weeds and that type of thing. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that stage.
Okay, we are looking at the end of the ash pit where the track gets buried underneath the earth. It just kind of slumps down on it over time. So it's pretty soggy, so we're going to let this go ahead and dry. And then we'll continue on the hill where it's definitely sloped. So well, it's looking pretty good so far. All right, at this point, the ash pit is finished. You can see the track looks pretty good. The ash pit, I really like the way the uh, the chalk came out to make it look like ash. And the um, ash on the rails and the girders, the support pieces, um, that just looks really good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you'll notice that the terrain around the outside of it, the track, uh, that is been um, finished. There's a couple different variations in the color. Uh, you'll see there's a little bit of a little bit of green kind of weed like vegetation color in there. Um, there's also generally a brown, a uh, little bit of sand spots just to give it a little bit of variation. Um, I even tried to include sand on the rails right here next to the ash pit where the steam engine would come to a stop and perhaps the sanders would be on. So other than that, um, that's going to be it for this project. The uh, ash pit is finished and uh, it's just waiting to be plugged into a section on the layout. Okay, at the end of every type of uh, adventure, I always try to do lessons learned. So number one would be, I think on a larger scale, you'd probably just want to use a big sprayer based on the amount of time it took for me to get the glue and water mixture to seep underneath the track. Um, but again, it is a diorama. It's going to get a lot more attention in a very small space. So I think the way it turned out, I like it. But again, if I did a whole yard that way, I would be <laughs> up all night and several nights. So um, the other thing is the fixative. Um, I started doing that at first and I didn't use it. Um, I even uh, stopped doing it on the ground cover, the ground foam, the little sand and and uh, coal colors and dirt colors and a little bit of the greenish kind of weed color that was mixed in here and there. Um, all that ground foam, I've sprayed that in the past, but I didn't do that on this uh, um, outing. So those are two things that I've uh, noticed while I was going through the process. Other than that, um, it looks pretty good and I'm excited to do the bases on a couple of the other structures, the sand house, the water tower, uh, some of those other videos. Um, if you want to check those out, you'll notice that you that the bases are basically a piece of oak and it's unfinished. So that needs to be done. So I'll, I'll add that as well. Okay, guys, that's a wrap for episode 25. Um, we're going to do a bunch more scenery because I've still got a few other buildings I need to do um, some scenery on the bottom. Um, one of the things that I haven't added was any of the trees or weeds. Um, we haven't even looked at static grass. I don't even have a static grass applicator, so that'll be a adventure for the future. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, please give me a like. If you didn't enjoy the episode, Please give me a reason why, and I will be more than happy to take um, any criticism, especially constructive criticism. Um, I'm doing this basically for the benefit of hobbyists that are out there, so you know, keep that in mind. Um, I'm not doing this for any other reason other than advancement of the hobby and uh, making all of our skills better, um, especially mine. So. Um, it's uh, about 24 hours away from Christmas Eve, so I hope everybody who's watching this has a great Christmas. Um, I appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we will see you on episode 26. Um, 
check out the uh, links at the end for my YouTube page and my um, www.michaelmccarville.com page. And uh, once again, have a safe and happy Christmas, everybody. Take care.